Hello, I am Kaylin from Homeschool Buyers Co-op, and I hope you will join me in welcoming Jeremy Tate, the co-founder of Classic Learning Test and host of today's webinar, Everything You Need to Know About College Entrance Exams. Beyond co-founding uh, uh, the Classic Learning Test, Jeremy is a speaker, an education entrepreneur, and a father to four children. During the webinar, uh, please feel free to type any questions you have for Jeremy in the chat box. He's gonna present for about 25 minutes, um, and then we'll be able to do Q&A after. Um, and with that, I will let Jeremy take it away. All right, great. Thanks, Kaylin. Thank you for having me, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, sometimes we joke around the CLT office that uh, the only thing more boring than taking a standardized test is listening to a talk on a standardized test. Um, but you've given up uh, some of your time to be here today, uh, and it actually is a really, really fascinating subject. Uh, the history of standardized testing, how we got where we're at in terms of college entrance exams, SAT and ACT, uh, how these are high stakes tests that cause often anxiety and stress for students. Um, we're going to learn a little bit about the history behind these tests. Um, if their influence is increasing or decreasing, that's a, a big debate right now. Um, and then tell you a little bit about the CLT as a third option uh, as well that was really uh, designed for homeschool students uh, we launched about three years ago. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a, a homeschool dad uh, of four. We are still kind of rookies. We're about a year and a half into to homeschooling ourselves. So we are learning a, a ton and have met so many amazing people uh, along the way that are, are much more experienced uh, than we are, but it's been, uh, it's been a great blessing doing that. Um, so what I'm going to do kind of for a quick outline is um, tell you kind of this story, the, the brief story uh, and abridged version of standardized testing in America, how we got to where we're at, um, the demand for a third option, and then I'm going to go through kind of five basic tips that you may want to jot down. And then after that, I'll give you uh, kind of a quick tour of a student account in the CLT website, uh, show you some great free practice tools as well, and then we'll open it up for Q&A at that point. All right, so uh, a brief history of standardized testing in the U.S. So we really need to go back to the year 1900, which is when the College Board was founded, and you probably heard the name College Board before. College Board is the owner uh, of the PSAT, the SAT, all of the AP tests, all of the SAT subject tests. Um, as a homeschool parent, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with those assessments, uh, what they can mean for college applications as well. Um, college Board launched before uh, the launching of the SAT. But what we had happen is around the time of World War I, um, as IQ testing is starting to take off, um, there was interest in using this new kind of testing uh, for GIs to get a better sense of who would be in intelligence, uh, who would be on the front lines, unfortunately, in World War I. They wanted to uh, give this kind of an assessment to hundreds of thousands uh, of mostly young men at that point um, to get a quick sense of kind of where they were academically. Uh, and it wasn't long after World War I, it was really 1926, um, that something like the SAT was really launched nationwide. It didn't go mainstream, however, until really about 1946, 1947, after World War II uh, and the GI Bill. As you can imagine, before World War II, uh, college was, was kind of a dream for the vast majority of Americans. Uh, college campuses were generally very small. Uh, it was a luxury for the affluent. Uh, after World War II, after the GI Bill, a boom in the economy, uh, there's certainly the opportunity for um, more uh, students to go to call a four-year college than ever before. Uh, and suddenly colleges start to become selective and they need to rely on some kind of an assessment that's fair, that levels the playing field. And part of the story behind the SAT uh, is actually really, really um, impressive. Um, some of the leaders at Harvard, at Princeton, didn't want uh, it to be a story where it was just the well-connected, just the affluent, uh, just the legacy students who were getting in. Uh, and the SAT offered an opportunity to level the playing field. And it was actually launched, it used to stand for the Scholastic Aptitude Test. It no longer does at all. And so part of aptitude, uh, we're talking about raw intelligence, the ability to connect ideas. Um, one of the great benefits of the old SAT and uh, I took it in 1999, uh, but my, my parents took the old SAT. And this was really close to a pure aptitude test. So we're talking back then of 
analogies, uh, similes, uh, logic questions on the math. Of course, until 1994, there was no, no calculator allowed at all on the math. Uh, and the beauty of an aptitude test is that it didn't favor any particular uh, set of academic standards. It didn't favor any curriculum over any other. So if you were coming from a Jewish school or a classical Christian school or a home school or a public school, uh, the old SAT was built to kind of defer uh, to curricular diversity in America. Well, fast forward to 1959 and um, the ACT launches. And the ACT launched um, shortly after Sputnik. We're talking about the space race uh, a new emphasis on math and science. And the ACT launches and says, wait a minute, uh, we shouldn't reward students based on, you know, their intellectual capacity or the, their potential. We should reward students based on what they actually learned in the classroom. And so the ACT launches uh, as what's known as an achievement test. It's based, it's based on mastery of content knowledge. Uh, how have students done over these four years of high school? Um, let's try to measure that and convey that to colleges. Well, ACT grew rapidly um, with that kind of brand. Uh, it was, they were appealing to a sense of fairness, saying again, uh, it's not fair to measure raw intelligence. It should be an assessment based on what's taught in the classroom. Um, over the decades, up until about 2010, the ACT continued to grow uh, as a competitor to college board and to the SAT. Until finally in 2012, for the first time ever, uh, the ACT became the most popular test uh, in America. Now, about this same time, around 2010, a movement started to go mainstream uh, in colleges. It had been present since 1969, uh, and that's called the test optional movement. So Bowden up in Maine was the first college to go test optional. Um, and that's not saying they don't accept an SAT or ACT or CLT. It's just to say that they're not requiring one for admission. Well, 2008, as you remember, the economy takes a downturn. The colleges, especially the four-year liberal arts colleges, felt that hit. And um, as a way, as a better way to uh, remove a barrier to attract more students, a lot of colleges quickly latched on to the test optional movement. And, um, and so College Board, uh, the SAT, and the ACT, uh, became alarmed. Uh, oh no, you know, what's going to happen to our, our company, our business, uh, if all of these colleges are going test optional? And so they kind of changed their game plan. And they went straight to the state legislatures, uh, working with the lobbyists on the ground um, to pass legislation that would require every public school student in the state uh, to, pat, to take an SAT or ACT as a graduation requirement. Um, and this all passes, of course, as, under the guise of expanded opportunity for all students. And so for many states, I believe 24 now, um, every student has to take the SAT is in uh, the state of Texas. Uh, other states, I believe uh, Michigan just went to SAT. Colorado, I think, is ACT. They go back and forth. But essentially, in the early 2012-13 uh, timeframe, College Board and ACT are doing battle between each other for these big, big state multi-million dollar contracts. This is the same time Common Core is being rolled out. Common Core, uh, as you know, um, a, a emphasis on informational text over uh, fiction or classical literature, um, absolutely uh, no degree of fluency with either logic or um, the Western canon. Um, and for, SAT and ACT to be as strong as possible to make the case to the states that they were the preferred test. Um, it was in their best interest to uh, align themselves with the Common Core standards. ACT did this in 13 and 14. College Board revamped the SAT and launched a new one in 2016. And this was a dramatic change from anything the SAT had ever been before that. In fact, I got a chance to hear David Coleman uh, who is the CEO of College Board. And this is kind of a wild story. David Coleman um, was also the grand architect of the Common Core Standards. And um, College Board hired him to be their new CEO um, as they were getting ready to, to rebrand as the new Common Core aligned SAT. So they announced this in late 2015. It launches in March of 2016. And, um, and since then, College Board and ACD have been going after these big state contracts. The problem, though, is this, is that if you're a homeschool parent, maybe you're at a charter school or a classical school, um, 
and you don't like Common Core. Uh, Common Core places too much emphasis on uh, technology, reliance on a calculator, um, too much emphasis on informational text over the value of fiction and classics. Uh, I taught English for years and I always believed that it was great stories that captured uh, the minds and the hearts and the attention of young people, never really uh, an informational text. And I've read these informational texts and they tend to be politically one-sided uh, and often just painfully, painfully boring. And um, so there is a demand for a third option. And this is where I got involved. Previously, I was running an SAT prep company. Uh, I was hearing about these changes and looking at the new um, SAT. And we thought, wow, this is, is not a very good assessment for a student that has had a traditional academic formation to put their best foot forward. Uh, they want to showcase their ability to connect ideas, which essentially we're talking about analogies, which there is now none on the SAT. Um, if we want to showcase their ability to read uh, philosophy or classical literature, uh, none of this is on the SAT or ACT anymore. So there was uh, certainly a demand for a uh, third option. So we launched CLT. I'll go into that a little bit more uh, in a few minutes. But um, let's pause now. We, we said when we started, uh, we're going to do kind of these five uh, basic tips. Uh, if you don't take away anything else kind of from the talk today, I think this will be really helpful in terms of um, working with your, your sons uh, and your daughters. And if you are a student, well, you need to know yourself. Um, the first thing is this, is, is don't stress. Don't put too much emphasis on these tests. Uh, I think of my own sister, who is truly one of the smartest people I have ever met in my entire life. Um, I, I can literally say to my sister, um, hey, on the day Leslie, my other sister, got engaged, what was I wearing? And she would say, oh, that goofy green hat and the red shirt and those terrible, you know, flip-flops. She would know. She has an incredible uh, photographic memory like nobody I've ever met before. Um, she's been wildly successful in her career. She will tell you she did terrible on the, on the old SAT. Um, it, it was not a good tool for her to showcase her academic ability. For some students, it's just not. Um, for other students, it is, it is a good way to showcase your academic ability. And that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about what is the best way for a student to give a college a good sense of kind of where they're at. Um, but again, there's so much uh, stress right now um, that, that students are experiencing, that parents are experiencing around these tests. Um, we're already at a point right now where about 30% of colleges are already test optional. They're not even requiring the test. Um, for your uh, uber selective colleges, your IVs, um, they do require an SAT or an ACT. Uh, most of them will accept a CLT as a supplemental at this point. Um, but they're also downplaying the emphasis. It used to be that if you got a 1580, you had your ticket to Princeton. Um, that is no longer the case. A 1580 might help you, but it's not going to be a shoe into Princeton. And, um, and they're, gonna, they're, 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 they're a lot more holistic than they've ever been before. And so what CLT wants to do, and I think we're really weird as a standardized testing company, and that we really genuinely want to do everything in our power to reduce student anxiety and stress. Um, it is a snapshot of your academic ability in a very particular sense at a given moment in time. And um, what, I, what I really hate to see, especially as someone who is involved in standardized testing, is when um, stress about a test kills a love for learning. Um, what I've seen with the CLT is that if a student loves to read anyway, and if they read on their own, they're gonna do really well on our test. If they hate to read, and if they generally don't do their, their work, they're probably not gonna do very well. Um, and we try not to overthink it more than that. So again, first one is please don't overstress. Uh, second tip is to know your options. Um, there really is a substantial difference between the SAT, ACT, and now the CLT as well. Um, for instance, if your son or daughter is verbally, uh, is stronger verbally than they are in quantitative reasoning, um, CLT would be a better test. It is two thirds verbal based whereas the SAT is 50-50, 50% math, 50% quantitative reasoning. Um, if they have had a more traditional academic formation, if they're used to reading religious text or philosophy, uh, the Constitution, um, they're probably going to do better on the CLT as well. Uh, if they are really, really strong in math, um, 
SAT or ACT, especially ACT. I believe that you're allowed to have a calculator for all portions of the ACT right now. That might be a better solution. So um, don't overwhelm yourself with research, but there are some real practical differences between these three assessments. Um, one of the big ones as well is just time. Accommodations are huge. If your son or daughter um, has you know, either a 504 or an IEP or receives any kind of a testing accommodation, um, if a student gets a double time, they're now testing for about eight hours for the SAT. Uh, I think that is a, a reason as well to consider test optional colleges or maybe not looking at that particular uh, test. So again, second tip, know your options. Third is, is practice. Uh, just practicing alone, there's so many great resources now that are free. It used to be the case even 20 years ago that the, old, the best way to do well in the SAT or ACT was to have a bunch of money and to hire a really great tutor. Um, that is no longer the case anymore. College board to their credit, and I'm not a college board fan, of course, they've done a great job partnering with Khan Academy, offering some great free resources uh, to parents. I think that they really have tried to level the playing field, which really was the initial goal uh, of, of SAT when they launched, was to say, you know what, we're not just going to um, perpetuate um, you know, the connected, benefiting the, the affluent, um, but we want to make sure that everybody has a fair shot at the best schools. Um, so the practice is available to you um, through the CLT website, which we'll tour as well. There is all the free practice stuff. Uh, we think that you would need to do great on that uh, as well. Um, the fourth one is this, is talk to colleges and get on campus. Um, right now, especially I love, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of smaller colleges, um, simply because I, I've met so many people that have gone to schools like Grove City or Patrick Henry or Hillsdale or Christendom, and, um, and they've been formed by it. They haven't just gone and kind of acquired some facts and some internships. Um, they've been poured into. They've been uh, loved. They've had people who have known them uh, from the time they came in their freshman year until graduation day. And um, and I think that is, is foundational for a young person, especially right now when um, the world feels very fragmented. Uh, people typically don't stay in their hometown. Everybody is all over. Uh, I think that can be a really rich time for a young person to go off uh, to a smaller four-year college, um, form deep friendships. Uh, and, and there's not too many colleges right now uh, that are four-year colleges, I think, that um, are doing what they ought to be doing. So we can kind of do Q&A later of what we would recommend is some really great college options. There are a lot out there, but I also think a lot of colleges that call themselves a four-year liberal arts college uh, are not worth the money at all. All right, the last one is this. The fifth tip is this, is that rely on analytics. Um, you're gonna see when we do the, the tour in a few minutes of the CLT website, um, CLT, SAT, ACT have provided you in the student report all the analytics that you need to see how you're doing. Uh, where do you need to work? Is it geometry? Is it textual evidence? Is it words in context? Um, to be able to identify your areas of weakness um, and spend some time working there, uh, I think would be uh, really helpful. So those are my tips. Um, we're gonna spend, before getting into the Q&A, about five minutes. I'm gonna give you a demo for two reasons uh, of the CLT website. Um, partially just to get you familiar with a great, uh, totally free option for practicing. The CLT is harder than the SAT or ACT. Because of that, colleges are very eager to recruit CLT test takers. Um, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you if they, if they even just use a CLT for practicing for the other test, uh, they're going to be that much more confident when they sit down and take the SAT or the ACT. So I'm going to put it on screen share and we'll, we'll do this together. Uh, and feel free as we're going as well to, um, to go to cltexam.com. Hopefully you can all see this. I'm gonna go ahead and log in into a student account. So this is just a uh, kind of a dummy account that we've set up to do demonstrations. So this is kind of a tour through the CLT website. And uh, if you have a, a freshman or sophomore, we've got our totally free uh, version to the PSAT coming up on February 6th. 
uh, students take it from home, they get the results the same day. Um, so I'll go through all of that, but first kind of the, the free uh, benefits you get from this. There are three full length practice tests um, for you to use to study with. Again, it's great for prepping for the CLT, but they're also gonna be very, very helpful for prepping for the SAT or ACT as well. So I will pull, pull one of these up right now. And you see immediately when you get into the test, um, here's a great example. C.S. Lewis, a great lecture he gave, uh, 1954 at Cambridge University. Uh, I promise you, you will be very unlikely to ever see anything C.S. Lewis on an SAT or ACT. And that's part of what we want to do is we want to take all of this time that's currently lost, learning meaningless tricks, uh, studying often meaningless text to say, you know, we could put students in front of the good, the true, the beautiful, uh, the timeless works and ideas that have shaped culture and society, sometimes for a couple millennia. Um, you, you can go through, you can take this, and what's really great here, um, and we'll just kind of scroll through this. So the CLT, this is the verbal section. There's a philosophy of religion. There's going to be a contemporary passage on a, on a scientific thinker. Um, there's literature, which I love. This is a really powerful passage right here if you get a chance to go back and read it. Uh, historical documents. Um, but if you put answers in here, what it's going to do, and we'll go up to grammar writing, skip ahead to quantitative reasoning. And again, on the CLT math, there is no calculator allowed. Um, sometimes students get a little bit frustrated with that, but colleges absolutely love it. And uh, we're hearing more and more that the kind of student who takes the CLT, and we're 50% homeschool students, um, they're getting on college campuses now and the professors are blown away. Um, if you have made a, a decision to homeschool your son, your daughter, um, you know, 20 years ago, colleges weren't quite sure uh, what to do with uh, these new homeschool students. Colleges now are becoming obsessed. These students are often uh, more mature than, uh, than their peers that are coming in. They're self-directed. Uh, they're responsible, they participate in class discussion. All right, but I wanna show you, um, you can use all of this, it is free, it's a great practice tool. Submit your test, confirm the submission, and what that's gonna do here is it's gonna give you your score. Uh, you can go back to the CLT concordance and that'll give you an SAT or ACT. But here you see, um, it'll show you the explanation. It'll show you why you missed what you missed. Um, in addition to, to giving you your score. So we see that up here, and I just kind of put in random answers. So I didn't do very well. I got a total score of one out of 120. Um, but what we'll see is that if we get back out of here, this will give you a projected SAT, ACT, CLT score for free. You can do this all at home uh, just as practice. So we provided this for you as a way to support uh, homeschool families and just to have them kind of get that confidence. Um, the other thing uh, we wanted to show you is we talked about analytics is that fifth tip. So here's what CLT analytics looks like. Uh, we'll pull that up. Um, so this dummy account, it shows you that this particular student in, uh, in verbal reasoning was right at the 50 percentile. Now, keep in mind that the CLT, the average student who takes the CLT is, um, follow me here, the average student who takes a CLT has an average SAT that is 200 points higher than the national average. And so if you do have your son or daughter take the CLT or the CLT 10 and you get the results back and you say, oh no, they're in the bottom 50%, that is not actually the, the reality. It just means they're, they're in the bottom 50% of CLT test takers, which is a high flying group of students already because most of them are homeschooled. So please do not be discouraged by this, but again, these analytics are for you to so give you insight as a student, uh, as a parent, what do you need to work on? So here you see quantitative reasoning, verbal reasoning, grammar writing, how you did on each, um, and then kind of your percentile as well. How do you fall uh, in comparison to the tens of thousands of students nationwide uh, who are taking it? And then we also go into further detail uh, in terms of academic domains, subdomains, uh, how you did. The last thing uh, to show you real quick in the student account before we open it up for uh, just some Q&A is um, what we're doing with colleges. So a lot of the colleges that we work with, Hillsdale is a great example. I love Hillsdale. Um, we are their preferred test uh, already. They love the kind of students who typically take the CLT and um, they're always interested in, uh, in recruiting. 
<laughs> the last thing to show you is uh, the share feature. So if you take either the CLT, which is $54, or the free CLT 10, which is designed for ninth and 10th grade students, it can be taken at home. Um, for the full analytics, there is an add-on of $18, but it is, um, the test itself is totally free. What you can do is any of these colleges for either the, the CLT 10 or the CLT, Baylor's University Honors College, uh, Belmont Abbey, Benedictine, uh, Bethel, Hillsdale, um, uh, Cedarville, 150 colleges now have already adopted. And even the ones that have not, uh, even schools like Princeton, already look at CLT as a supplemental. And I wanted to, to show you that as well is, um, you know, we've worked with so many students over the past year and I've honestly been uh, shocked as I've gotten immersed. I was formerly a public school teacher and as I've immersed myself in the homeschool world and I've met homeschool parents and so many students, um, I am perpetually blown away. Um, these students are brilliant, so well read. Um, and it's sometimes these students that don't benefit from this big problem that's called test score inflation. So when I was graduating high school in the late 90s, um, about 10 or 15 kids per year would get a perfect 1600 on the SAT. Now it's about 1500. And in fact, when CLT met with Princeton, um, they told us that half of their 30,000 applicants, so 15,000 students, half of them have a 1540 or better which is within the 60 point margin of error. And so in other words, the SAT isn't really differentiating among students at a lot of top universities. And so college board who owns the SAT, their solution is to offer you even more tests. They say, hey, we'll take all of our SAT subject tests as well. Pay for those and give up your Saturday. Um, what, what CLT is doing is coming in and saying, wait a second, we could just solve this problem by having another test that's actually harder. And so you're going to notice on the concordance chart, 116 on the CLT is literally off the charts on the ACT or the SAT. Um, you have to get down to a 114 to even start to equate uh, to a perfect score. If a student, um, we just saw the student in the, uh, the dummy account that had a 73, that would equate to about 11, 15, 11, 10, 1120 or a 22 uh, on the ACT. So that is a lot. I wanted to kind of keep the initial presentation at about 25, 30 minutes. Uh, I love doing Q&A. Uh, CLT loves talking to homeschool uh, parents uh, whenever we get a chance. Um, it is really only because of homeschool parents that we, we exist at all. Um, I've had a number of colleges tell me over the past couple of years, um, you know, the only reason we are adopting CLT is because homeschool students and parents keep asking us about it. So thank you all um, for advocating for us uh, as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeremy. That was very informative. Um, so uh, please, everybody who has any questions, you can either write them in the chat box or if you want to speak directly to Jeremy, just raise your hand and I will make sure you are able to do so. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick things off with a question of my own and then we'll get to your questions. But are there uh, any benefits to taking an Entrix exam if you know you're applying to test optional colleges? That's a great question, Kaylin. So for probably about two thirds or even three quarters of the colleges that are already test optional, um, most of those colleges still use the SAT or ACT or sometimes the CLT for merit scholarships. Uh, and, and many also use it for placement in addition to that. And so I would recommend really for every student, take the SAT, ACT, take the CLT, um, whatever you think would be kind of your test of choice, and get a sense of how you did, and then make a decision after testing um, if it would be a good way to submit scores or not. Um, I think for a lot of colleges, uh, if you choose to not submit a score, um, they, they really truly don't uh, discriminate you as an applicant at all. Now, for homeschool students, I do know of a number of colleges, uh, St. John's College down the street is a good example. They are technically test optional, but not for homeschool students. Uh, and there are a lot of colleges like that. And so that creates this very bizarre dynamic where, um, you know, a college that is test optional except for homeschool students then requires homeschool students to go and take a Common Core uh, aligned assessment, uh, even though the Common Core is the reason many parents took their students out to begin with. Um, so we're hoping we can change that. But yes, Caitlin, to get back to your question, um, take the test first, see how you did. Um, and then if it would benefit you at that point, I'd choose to submit. 
Thank you. Um, so our first question is from Shelly. She gave us a little bit of background, which is that she's thinking of having her son repeat the seventh grade to get another year of pre-algebra uh, and work on grammar and writing skills. He's 12, about to turn 13, and she tries not to get too hung up on grade levels, but she doesn't want to do something that could cause problems later on when it's time for him to take college entrance exam. Is there a max age for taking the PSAT, SAT, ACT, or CLT? I can only speak for CLT in that we do not have a max age at all. Um, I think what the homeschool community does so well is that over any testing or requirements, uh, generally put, put cultivating um, that love for learning above everything else. And I think as long as that stays uh, front and center, by the time they get to be 16, 17, 18, uh, they're going to be in really good shape. Um, and Stephanie was wondering if you could go over the different pricing options for the, the CLT tests again. Yeah, a couple things with pricing. So um, CLT, when you, we get an email from a parent who says, I love what you're doing, we'd love to participate. Um, can you offer us a discount or a fee waiver? We don't want price to be an issue. Uh, and so do send that email to info at cltexam.com. Uh, and uh, we want to be the leader among college entrance exams in terms of working with families uh, where they're at and the price isn't an issue. The cost of the CLT is $54 per student. Uh, built into that is the cost of analytics as well. Uh, I believe the CLT 8, which is designed for 7th and 8th grade students, I believe that's 38, but I'm not positive. I should know that. Um, the CLT 10 is free. Analytics for the CLT 10 are $18 per student, um, which I think is helpful. Um, but the test itself, for, for families who say, this seems interesting enough, um, I'll find out more about it, we'll try it out. Um, and because these tests are tied to scholarships, the CLT 10, um, it's based on an honor code. Parents do need to, to sign off uh, that they're going to be proctoring it. Um, the next one is coming up on February 6th. And, um, and so please, if you have a ninth or 10th grade students, and we, in, in terms of age, um, Ninth and 10th graders only are eligible for scholarships based off the CLT 10, um, but um, we've had seventh and eighth graders take it as well, especially if they're um, kind of high flyers. Um, do we have Lisa on the line? Lisa, are you able to speak with us? Hello, Lisa. Hold on, I think I had Lisa on mute. Oh, okay. Let me see here. Oh no. As some of you know, we've been having some, um, for those of you who signed up yesterday, we've been having some fun technology issues. Yes. So unfortunately, Lisa, I don't think I can unmute you at this time, but if you wanna put your question into the chat box, I will be sure that uh, we get to it. Um, so apologies for that. Um, so I think you just answered Debbie's question, but we'll just revisit it just in case. Um, I, I believe you said that the CLT is proctored by parents, and she wanted to know where the CLT testing sites are located. It's a great question. We've got about 150 uh, testing sites around the country. I think the next actual CLT is maybe March 2nd. Um, and so it's, it's typically a brick and mortar uh, private school that's going to be serving as a testing site. What's really cool though is students bring their own device. So we didn't talk about that. CLT is same day results. And so even though we're very much uh, kind of traditional in terms of the source material that we're using, um, I think much more reflective of, of kind of public school maybe 60 or 70 years ago, um, our online platform uh, is, is leading the industry. So same day results for students, same day analytics for families. Um, and again, CLT 10, you take it at home, you get all those results the same day. Uh, students, they take the CLT itself at 10 o'clock in the morning if you're in the East Coast or Central time zones. Um, I believe it's nine mountain time. Um, and uh, take the test, you're done at noon, and then you get results and analytics uh, that night at about seven o'clock. So that actually leads in perfectly to um, Allison's question, which is, are test scores provided only to the parents versus being sent to a college or a test repository? I love that question. It, it, it's such an important question. So when a student registers for the SAT or ACT, they can choose four colleges that their scores get sent to immediately. And then the scores just get sent. If the student loves their scores or hates their scores, 
they just get sent automatically. CLT came in and we listened to students. We actually met with students as we were launching. And students don't like that. They want to see their scores first. They want to be in control of if a college is going to get their scores or not. And so CLT, we do not send any scores to any college under any circumstances at all. Um, and let me go back real quickly into a, a screen share in here. And um, are we, we I believe we looked at that already. Um, students can send their scores to colleges uh, if, if they want to, um, but we're, we don't ever do that. And so we encourage students to do that if they like it. And the other thing to add about that is um, CLT this past year, we added an optional essay. It's not required. Most students now are taking us up on it. The difference though is that we don't grade it at all. What we do instead is a student can choose after they, they take it to send that essay directly onto colleges. And so as you can imagine at a lot of top colleges, Princeton, Harvard, Brown, um, these admission offices, they know that um, generally the college essay has been edited about 10 times by a copy editor, tutor, parent, what have you. And they're not, they're becoming less and less trustworthy. And so CLT is now providing a way to get an authentic writing sample directly to a college where the college knows this is the student's work because they took it in a proctored environment. Um, so that's been really exciting as well. Thank you. Um, can the free CLT 10 test be taken more than once? Yeah, so there's, there's actually no limit for the CLT 10. It can be taken as many times. Um, we offer it three times a year. Uh, this year, it's February 6th is remaining, and then April 11th after that. Excellent. And then another or another, another uh, attendee's question is sort of a follow-up on that. Besides just taking practice exams over and over again, what else can a middle schooler or a ninth grader do to better prepare for these exams and be prepared for college? It's another great question. Um, we wanted to de-emphasize de um, de the time spent on prep. Prep is boring. It's not fun. We do think it's good to take the test on a device at least once or twice as practice just to get familiar with the device itself. But um, the problem with an achievement test is it lends itself to prep really well. An aptitude test, which is, is more where the CLT is coming from, does what's the best thing to do to prep for the CLT? Read other stuff and read a lot. Students, um, the homeschool student, who loves to read on their own and reads because they love reading, they typically do very, very well on the CLT. Um, and there's no doubt it is their best tool to showcase that to colleges, especially if they like reading uh, older stuff, classic novels, literature, philosophy, uh, anything like that. Thanks. Um, Mandy would like to know what time of year uh, should a student take the test? Typically, end of junior year uh, or beginning of senior year. Um, for the CLT 10, it's, it's generally ninth and 10th grade students. We offer it three times, and it's, it's very low stakes. So really, any of those times, it's beneficial to the family. Uh, we, we defer to the families on that. Are there classes that students should have taken before taking these tests? There's no classes. I think with the SAT and ACT, um, if those are your tests of choice, I think you do, you do benefit from taking a, a prep class. Um, it still is the case, I think, despite College Board's best, best efforts, um, because it's an achievement test, that if you can afford a high dollar tutor, there is an advantage there. Um, again, the CLT, we look a lot more actually like the old SAT than even the SAT does now, because we have analogies, we have logic questions, we have a lot of the hallmarks that used to be, um, if you're a parent listening right now, um, and you look at the CLT and you look at the current SAT, the CLT will look actually a lot more like the test that you took either in 80s, 90s, um, whenever you may have taken it. And um, so we want to de-emphasize the, the time spent on prep. Um, this should be um, one or two uh, Saturdays, you know, or maybe a school day where you take the assessments. Um, but kind of the, the weekend, week out of, of uh, an SAT prep book that's this thick, um, I have seen that really um, kind of kill a love for learning, a love for reading and students. And that is the last thing uh, we want to see happen. Um, we have another question. Um, I have an eighth grader doing 10th grade level work and we're considering allowing her to graduate early. Which CLT should she take this year? Yeah, I would start with the free uh, CLT 10 on February 6th. Um, and then, 
depending on how she does on that, maybe the actual CLT on uh, March 2nd. Um, what if your child just doesn't have the knowledge to get a good score on these tests? What advice would you give? Yeah, you know, so so part of, there's two sides to this. You know, on, on the one side, um, I, I really hate the fact that I, I know some students, they see their score uh, and it's a discouragement to them. And it's, it's wrong that it's ever the case that a student gets a sense of their identity. I think this has been the case for years. I still remember my SAT score from high school. Uh, I'm not proud of it. It wasn't as good as I thought it would have been. And um, I felt like that kind of like was a mark on, on me. Um, people associate that sometimes with like their value as a person. That should never, ever be the case at all. It's a simple test. It's a snapshot for a given moment in time and that's it. On the other hand, these tests are real accountability. And again, for a student who they never read on their own, they don't do their homework uh, very much. They, you know, they're spending more time gaming than anything else. They're probably not going to do well on the CLT, you know, or the SAT or the ACT. And so part of it is real accountability that um, it is kind of that harder look in the mirror uh, as well. And that's true of any of the assessments. Now for students like my sister where test anxiety, for various reasons, um, it just was not going to be a good option. Look at some of the test optional colleges. There's wonderful, wonderful uh, competitive, uh, a school like Wake Forest is, uh, is test optional. Uh, University of Chicago, one of the most selective in the country, just became test optional as well. So um, what I have found working with homeschool students um, and, and CLT, we're called a classic learning test, not classical, meaning there's no you know, Latin or Greek on the CLT. By classic, we just mean more traditional. Um, what I have found is that for most homeschool students, test taking is actually a very good way to demonstrate their academic ability. Um, and that's why on average, homeschool students actually do a lot better than their public school counterparts on pretty much any standardized test um, that, you can, that you can name. Does it hurt your chances of getting into a test optional college if you don't submit a test? I know they'll still accept people without it, but is it less likely you'll get in? I think for homeschool students, um, you know, they're going to tell you when you when you tour campus, uh, you know, it won't hurt you at all. If you're a homeschool student, uh, which I, I think everybody in the uh, in the webinar today is, um, that it definitely can, especially if they don't have have a lot of confidence already with the way that particular homeschool organization, or maybe if, if you're not part of an association, uh, does transcripts. And so um, I, I've met with people in admissions where, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, the joke has been that every single homeschool student has a perfect high school transcript. And, um, and so therefore, with homeschool students, they do tend to look um, at the college entrance exam with a little more weight than they would, um, I think, to a student who is applying from a well-known public school or a well-known private school where the admissions office has some confidence in, um, in that transcript. So I, I hope that makes sense. I do know kind of the, the rhetoric, they are going to always tell you, no, we do a holistic application. Um, it's a snapshot. If it's, if it's a homeschool student and the college has a sense that, um, you know, mom and dad um, are, you know, kind of fully in control of the transcript, um, most likely they're going to put more weight on the college entrance exam because it is external and they need something external uh, to get a sense of where the student's at. Um, how many CLT dates are offered throughout the year and what days of the week do they fall? Yeah, so CLT offers four Saturdays throughout the year. Uh, we also offer in-school testing dates as well. Uh, sometimes those are offered at colleges to make it uh, easy for a homeschool student and their schedule. Uh, CLT 8, I think is only once, it's May 8th this year. And the CLT 10 is offered three times a year uh, the two dates remaining again are February 6th and then April 11th. Um, this question from Lisa is very interesting. I have a very asynchronous kid, 13 year old, but taking gifted 11th and 12th grade level history and English language art classes. However, he is age appropriate for math, currently pre-algebra. What math minimums are required to be ready for the CLT, ACT, and SAT? So all three assessments um, right now do go up to, um, to have some level uh, of trig. So CLT, we're about 5% trig. Um, so typically the order in most public schools would be, um, you know, algebra one, algebra uh, two, 
sometimes they'll do geometry in between um, and then pre-calc or trig. Uh, so, but keep in mind, you know, the, the SAT before 1994, a lot of students take the CLT math and they say, that was so hard, I didn't finish. The vast majority of students never finished the math on the old SAT or the old uh, ACT. Um, it's kind of come to become an expect expectation. And so our goal is to, is to provide um, an assessment that can help, you know, your super, super high-flying math student to showcase their academic ability to colleges. And also the student um, who maybe hasn't gotten up to Algebra 1 or 2. Um, and so I think you'll see the other benefit, though, um, is that some of the questions that you'll see on the CLT do not fall into Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Trig, or Geometry. Um, they're logic questions. And there are no more logic questions on the SAT. There never have been actually on the ACT as well. And we find that, that students uh, coming from a more traditional uh, academic formation tend to do really well with logic questions. That tend to, tended to be a good way for them to put their best foot forward. Um, this is from Georgiana. This is the first time I'm learning about the CLT. I have a 10th grader. We started homeschooling last year in ninth grade. So she's on target by grade, unlike other homeschoolers who are more advanced. Would it be a disadvantage for her to take the CLT 10 in February as March as a trial since CLT is new to us? Or should she, you know, should she try to see how she measures up or, or, or wait a few months? Yeah, I would say there's absolutely no risk uh, doing the CLT 10 again, being free, something you can take in the comfort of your own home. Uh, I think what we're providing in terms of analytics, um, there, there's just at this point for a homeschool family, um, we don't believe there's anything else out there uh, that can come close to competing with CLT analytics in terms of identifying uh, where a student may need to work, where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are. We think that's going to be really helpful. In fact, um, that project of creating those kind of analytics was really uh, at the request of homeschool families who, who were saying, we're three years old now, who were saying to us, this is what we need, this is what we need. Um, on our board, we've got uh, several leaders from great homeschool uh, associations, and um, that's what we have been hearing. And so, again, answer your question, no risk, CLT 10, but also um, those three full-length, uh, totally free practice tests that are in the CLT uh, student account. Um, take those, utilize those uh, as well, and, um, and that'll be a good start. And then what are the time limits for the CLT? It's a great question. The CLT is a 120-minute assessment. There's 40 minutes for the verbal reasoning. There's 35 minutes for the grammar writing section. And then there's 45 minutes for quantitative reasoning. And then do you offer accommodations for students with learning disabilities? If so, uh, what documentation do you require? We do. So CLT right now, we're meeting uh, over 90% of accommodation requests. Uh, I believe we're at four weeks right now uh, that those requests need to be put in in advance. Um, I believe it's only um, a, uh, a translator, um, if a student um, is hearing impaired, um, that we don't offer at every testing site, but uh, it is our goal. And we found also being an online platform, and, and in fact, our, our office manager is 100% uh, blind. She loves the CLT because we are compatible with technology. And so she can take the CLT um, on JAWS instead of having to have a reader, which she loves. She can play it, she can pause it, she can rewind. Um, she can do all of that and be in control of the testing experience. And so we found that for um, a lot of students with, with different kinds of uh, uh, needs, CLT has been a great option. That's wonderful. Um, I've gotten this question from a few of our attendees who would like to know your thoughts on gap years and if they have, if there are benefits to taking one. Yes, uh, there absolutely are benefits, especially as, as many homeschool students, uh, you know, are kind of eligible already, 17 sometimes, to start applying to college. Um, there's, there's a ton of great options. Uh, email me or even um, jtate at cltexam.com. We'd love to get into um, kind of some of the specifics for gap year programs that we recommend uh, ourselves. But I've seen it, it's a great opportunity uh, sometimes to travel abroad um, to there, there's so many options out there. So we, uh, we recommend it. Um, all of the colleges that we work with um, will honor a CLT score from uh, a year and a half uh, before application, um, sometimes longer. And um, so, yeah, absolutely. It can be a great, great option. 
And are there, um, well, before I ask the question, um, we're, we're actually getting kind of low on questions and short on time. So if anybody has uh, questions, go ahead and type them in right now and I will make sure that um, Jeremy has the opportunity to answer them. Um, what was I gonna say? I just totally blanked, how embarrassing. But we have a new question in. So uh, what is the best way to help a student with test anxiety? Yeah, I think to the first step, I think I think to sit down with them and, and to uh, explain that this is not uh, a value of their worth uh, as a person in any way, that you downplay the importance of the test itself. Um, it was never the case in the, you know, 2,500 year or more uh, history of education, at least as we know it in the West, that a standardized assessment would have this kind of importance that it does right now. So I think one is we say, you know, to our sons, to our daughters, this can be helpful. This can be helpful to mom and dad in identifying what we need to work on. Um, but this does not define you uh, as a person. And again, there are countless people out there who are absolutely brilliant. And what is being captured in a test uh, like the SAT or ACT or CLT um, does not show, show that off. I gave my sister again as a great example. So um, I think that's helpful. And then also, I think if it is a test like the CLT, to get them confident with um, the practice. That's why we provided that. And I'm really into track and, and running. And I think of cross country is a good example of, you know, uh, an athlete who is running a cross country course um, for the first time. They don't know where the hills are. They don't know where that, you know, big stump is they have to jump over or the creek or what, it, what is it, what have you. Uh, but to have done it a few times, they start to be confident in the course itself. Uh, the course of CLT never changes. It's always structured and set up the same way. Simply knowing the course is going to be really helpful for reducing uh, student anxiety. Um, excellent. If my student is planning to take the SAT and the CLT, can she prep well for both using CLT practice alone? Absolutely. Uh, I think of it as, as uh, you may have seen in a, in a baseball game when the batter is warming up with three bats. Uh, and then when they grab that single bat, it feels really light. Because CLT is harder than the SAT, if they train on the CLT, the SAT is going to be a real confidence booster because it's going to feel easier by comparison. So we survey uh, students after every test. It's actually built into the end of it. Over 80% of students who have taken both the SAT and the CLT say that the CLT is a more rigorous assessment, even though more than 90% said it is their preferred test uh, either way. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like training with weights, I would say. Um, excellent. Thank you. And when do you recommend that um, you get the, the test practice book offered on the website for your student? So the practice book that we have uh, on the website, again, if you're um, as a homeschool dad, I'm, I'm actually always about reducing technology, uh, not introducing more of it. And so that's why we offer a, a print version. Um, I believe that's $38 uh, on the website. And um, yeah, so that, um, it could be used for CLT 10 as well, even though there's gonna be some trig on that. Uh, but that's a great tool. I would recommend getting that as early as uh, freshman year. Um, and it's a good way to kind of remove the devices uh, to give them two hours. You know, part of any test, especially the SAT, this is true. When I was running an SAT prep company, uh, one of the things I noticed working with students is that typically sections one, two, and three, they would come out of the gate and they would do really, really well. And then sections, you know, seven, eight, and nine of the SAT, they're mentally just baked. They've been testing for over three and a half hours at that point. Um, their brain is just mush. We're talking about marathon testing. It's one of the reasons the CLT is half the length of the SAT, is that we realize you can actually get a much more accurate score um, if you don't do marathon testing. Um, and so, but if you do especially want to do SAT or ACT, have your son or daughter, um, it, it's hard to do, but, but carve out that four hours to say, you know, we're going to do this right now. Um, it's like training for a marathon. The only way to get good at training for a marathon is to do those 20, 22 mile, mile runs in advance. Same way with marathon testing, which really is the SAT, ACT. Can we hope we're a little bit shorter, uh, but do the full length, kind of the question a day, SAT, uh, never really helps uh, a whole lot. You've got to build up that, that kind of ability to focus long for a long period of time. 
Wonderful. Um, we have one final question from Wendy. Um, and we, you already discussed some accommodations that you make for special needs students, but specifically for autistic students who may need more time to take the tests. Do you, uh, is that, is that uh, accommodation that you provide? Absolutely. Time and a half, uh, even double time um, CLT. Uh, we work with all of our proctors testing sites around the country. Uh, to make sure that um, the maximum number of accommodations are honored. And, and, um, and just to emphasize, Kaylin, you know, our goal when we launched this was not just to beat SAT and ACT in terms of content, but really to beat them in terms of student experience as well. Um, we, we hope that a student takes the CLT if they need accommodations, if they don't, say, wow, that was really smooth. It was easy. Communication was really clear. And, uh, you know, I still have most of my Saturday uh, to have some fun. Wonderful. Well, Jeremy, on behalf of the co-op members, I would like to thank you for sharing your time and knowledge with us today. Um, for anyone who's uh, attending the webinar, we'll be sending an email shortly with a link to this recording. So if there's anything you missed um, and want to review, uh, you, you'll have that in your inboxes uh, not too long. Um, for any of our members who have students preparing for college entrance exams, the co-op offers a plethora of resources to help them get ready. Uh, for example, the College Prep Genius Group Buy is currently open and through tomorrow uh, with 21% savings and 1,500 bonus smart points. Um, to get College Prep Genius or any of our other test prep resources, visit www.homeschoolbuyerscoop.com. One more time, I'd like to thank our host, Jeremy Tate, and wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin, for having me. Bye.